Good morning, our dear students. Uh, let's take a recap of this lecture on MSB 413 segmentology. I call it a recap because uh, we have done this before in the class before um, before the lockdown. So let's treat this lecture again. Uh, the lecture is on marine sediment. Marine sediment. When you say sediment is quite different from soil and also quite different from sand, to a layman they may mean the same, but to a marine scientist that you are, you need to know the differences. Marine sediment uh, is a naturally occurring loose organic or inorganic particulate material that accumulates, okay, unconsolidated on the sea floor. Uh, we know why we say unconsolidated because by the time they are well consolidated, uh, you might, can as well call it a, a rock. So, unconsolidated is a keyword. All right, so these materials we are broken down by a process of weathering or erosion transported to another uh, destination by the action of ice or wind or water and then deposited at the bottom. Now what it means that wherever you see any particular segment is not actually where it has its origin. So it must have been from somewhere broken down, then transported and then settles at the bottom of the water body. Also take note that it has to settle at the bottom before at the bottom of a water body before you can refer to it as sediment. Soil is actually subarea while sediment are submerged. Soil is exposed while sediment is submerged. So that's the difference between the two. Okay. Sun actually is just a matter of size. So you can have the sand size. The sand size, sand is defined by size. A size of 0 0.0625 to 2 millimeter. 0 0.0625 millimeter to 2 millimeter. Okay. Is called sand. In other words, you can have the sun size in soil, you can also have the sun size in sediment. So, what is actually sedimentology? Because this course is about sedimentology. So, it's a study of the process or the processes of the formation, transportation, and deposition of materials that accumulate as sediment in continental and marine environment and eventually form sedimentary rocks. So it involves a lot of a whole lot of things surrounding sediments. Okay. Uh, we need to understand uh, the processes that interpret the geologic history. Okay. Through observation of sedimentary or that was sedimentologists apply the knowledge of sedimentology to do. There are certain characteristics of sediments. We can classify sediments based on a number of, uh, of things. We can classify sediments based on porosity. You know, how porous are they? You know, or what is the volume of voids you know, or space? okay you know that can contain liquid so porosity how porous is it it can also be classified based on its permeability 
that's the ability to return water. In other words, uh, permeability and porosity are opposite. If a particular segment is porous, then it's not permeable. If it's permeable, then it's not porous. Okay. Also, the roundness. Roundness the, uh, uh, describes the roughness or smoothness of the the sedimentary grain, the grains of those of the sediment. Sorting is how what the range of particle in a sediment, you know, sorting are they of similar sizes, you know, or otherwise. Matrix refers to the fine grained mass of materials such as clay or seal in which larger grains, crystals or glass are embedded. To form a matrix, okay. So based on the grain size, the sediment can be classified as gravel, sand, mud, and so on. Gravel, if it is anything more than two millimeter in diameter, sand, if it is between 0 0.0625 to five and two millimeter, and mud, if it is less than 0, 0.0. 625. In other words, if you use sand, sand has a range. Okay, so if that range is less, if, if the sand is less than the minimum range of sand, then it is a mold. If it is more than the maximum range of the sand, then it is a gravel. Sediment transport. Now, when we talk of sediment and as marine biologists, we are actually very, very much interested in uh, these sediments in water. And then in water, these sediments are being transported. Depending on the size, depending on the size, if they are very fine sand, then they'll be suspended. Okay? If they are medium size like the sand, then they have what they call saltation. They will, they will, they, they will flow and then get back to the floor again, forming a parabola. Now, if they are heavy, if they are heavy, then they can't move in the water column. Then they have to creep along the 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 the, the, the bottom. They creep along, and these ones are called the bed load. Now, what are the types of sediment? Type of sediment based uh, on the sources or their origin. You have the litigious sediments. These are the ones that actually come from land. Litos means land. Okay, so they originate from land and then they can be carried into the water body by river, ice, wind, and so on. Okay, they are of land origin. Then you have the biogenic sediment. Bio means living or life. Okay, uh, these organisms, these sediments, we are formed from organisms that we are alive, but then dead and then, you know, deposited uh, from the shells, skeletons, bones, or remains of any organism that eventually find its way into the water, the bottom of the water. They also have the hydrogenous ones. Hydrogenous. Hydro means water. Okay. Or we call them autogenic. Auto means self. Now, these are sediments that are formed within the water body. Maybe as a result of some chemical reactions or something happens. And then they get, there's a PPT, some precipitates are formed and then they are dragged down to the bottom. Okay. So, they are called autogenic sediments. We also have the cosmogenous sediment. These ones are, and they come from space. You know, sources that may include meteorites or cosmic dust. Okay, uh, that eventually find its way into the water body to form the marine sediment. So these are some <coughs> pictures that are describing these different types. Okay, like the quartz and the red clay. They are they are typical example of terrigenous. Or, or lithogenous sediment, okay. Uh, but then the 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 planting 
remnants like silica or calcite, the example of the biogenic sediments. Why tectites are the typical example of the cosmogenous sediments. But we want to discuss <coughs> more on the on the biogenic sediment because these are the sediments that are of actual interest to us because they form most of the mineral resources that we get from the ocean. Biogenic sediments, you know, they are biogenic sediments are in the but materials in the ocean come primarily from the breakdown of plankton or uh, skeletons. Okay. Now, uh, and these sediments in the deep ocean, uh, when they have loss of this biogenic material, they are now referred to as ooze. ooze. Now, the ooze can be calcareous ooze or siliceous ooze. It is defined as calcareous if it's, uh, it's mostly uh, made up of calcium carbonate calcium carbonate but it also refers to as siliceous ooze if you have more of silica most silica plantain are calcareous okay we can see that calcareous made up of calcium carbonate example you have the foraminifera and the cocolitifor cocolitifor or the cocolites then you have the siliceous ones made up of silicon four oxide mostly and then you have the radiolarians and the diatoms okay these are examples of siliceous ones where you have the diatoms okay and then you have the radiolarians these are examples of the calcareous one where you have the cocolitophores and then you have the foraminifera. Please, you want to get more information on any of them, just pause and then get the information before you proceed. Skeletal, skeletal sediment constitute. Now, the plantain, we can be calcareous or siliceous. Now, the zoo plantain, we can also be calcareous or siliceous. You have the nectin. Okay. So these are major sources, the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, and the nectin. These are the major constituents of the biogenic sediment in the ocean. Alright, so this is the end of the lecture. And we will want us to, to get the best of the lecture and then prepare for the uh, any further assessment that will be coming subsequently thank you so much and god bless you